talk about collecting work from students. So, so I, I think my favorite thing that I, and maybe what I was first told when I started using Canvas was about this thing called speed grader. And it's, I, I, nothing is ever perfect, but it, it works really well and I'm really happy I've used it. And it's the difference between grading like written up math proofs on this versus grading them on their like crumpled together pieces of paper where like they don't have a staple so they just like mush it into a ball and hand it to me. This, yeah, this way I'm not like biased by how they have done, done that. And yeah, I mean, it, as an example of something that's a little strange in it, maybe, does that come next? No. So it's uh, one of the options within SpeedGrader is organized by when the student turns it in. And as far as I can tell, like doing that at the same time as having the students be anonymous seems to not quite work because it'll say like the second person to turn it in and then they will have not have turned anything in, but then like the eighth person to have turned something in will have. So I just, I guess with the early adopting that Andrew was talking about, I just sort of accept that 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 feature doesn't seem to work the exact way that I want, but I really like that I, I can give comments just based nothing. Yeah, this is also why I said it at my introduction, is this is the part that I like best in Canvas. I, I like that when I'm giving comments on the assignments, I'm basing it just off of like what they have input into the computer. I'm not basing it on any prior knowledge on my part. Oh, and may, maybe this isn't even what I was supposed to talk about, that the two minutes left threw me off. So in, a, in one of my classes, I was, wanted them to upload zip files that contained multiple files within them. And one nice thing in Canvas was I was able to tell, or I was able to make it so they couldn't upload the individual files one at a time. So if they tried to do that, it would give error. It's supposed to be a zip file. And there were a few who still tortured me by like making five separate zip files <laughs> containing the five assignments and then uploading those one at a time. But for the most part, I found that that, that flexibility to only accept a certain document type was very helpful. I could also very much imagine <coughs> saying like, I won't accept a Word document, please convert it to PDF first. And then by saying it has to be a PDF, that would just kind of remind them to do that rather than me having to decide if I want to email them and ask them to send it again. Um, so I like the idea that we can kind of have custom deadlines for different students. And so if you're working with a student who has some kind of issue, you can change the, the due date for that particular student. Or if someone misses a quiz and you feel gracious enough to let them re remake it, you can do that. And there's a couple different ways. Um, you can assign to individual students, but then I discovered that you can also go to moderate quiz, for example, which is an option that wasn't really intuitive to me at first, but under that you can see a list of students and they might have one attempt, but you can adjust that and give them two attempts or three. And um, it still works to have students do this at home because if you have a time limit built into your test, say a quiz is always 10 minutes, after they start that quiz, they'll get cut off. So you don't have to worry so much about being really precise. It, originally, I thought I had to be very precise on, okay, this is um, when the quiz opens and it closes at said time, but that doesn't always work in the class. I'm not really sure when we're gonna start taking our quiz. So I have time limits now on all of these things that are timed. Uh, one thing I really like about collecting work from, for students is that in my 137 quiz we're producing artwork and instead of me collecting 50 or 60 actual pieces of, of paper art products I have them snap a photo of it and upload that which is so great uh, but one of the issues I've run into is that automatically the picture turns out really huge um, and so I can't just see it I have to like scroll over and down or download it and uh, one way I heard around that is that they could take a picture and then put it in a Word document and I wouldn't have that problem. But that's another step for them. So it's too bad uh, that I don't know of a way that they can just snap their photo, turn it in, because they love how simple that is. And then uh, me be able to see it in a proper size, that would be nice. 
And also for notes, like if you have them taking notes, they can always take a picture of something and turn that in. And um, I really like that. Sometimes they'll forget to turn in a photo and I'm not sure how to navigate that. Then little problems come up like, oh, my computer wasn't working. So that's why I wasn't able to turn it in. And so that's kind of a judgment call thing on, on my part. Do I believe them that they weren't able to do this? And I've come to the point where, you know, I drop the lowest grade in many cases. So if you're late, you're late. And you need to make sure that you do these things on time, knowing that these problems come up. Uh, routinely with technology like that's on you don't cut it so close that you're gonna have trouble um, get yourself in trouble if you can't upload it in time so I was just gonna comment on Turnitin which I mentioned at the beginning it, it has great advantages and it's now in SpeedGrader you can use it right that was a nice change they made it last year when if we use Turnitin we couldn't also use SpeedGrader which was SpeedGrader is fantastic, frankly. You can make comments, you can, you know, as, as, a, on, as if a Word document, for example. And then when you assign the grade, it goes right into the grade book. But you couldn't do that with uh, Turnitin last year. Now they fixed it, it's fantastic. And the only functional problem for me is that it's many steps to get Turnitin set up, even though it's now a tool in Canvas. Great. It's too great. Um, so, uh, yeah, SpeedGrader is great. One of the things I like is you can actually give video and voice feedback. You know, so students submit a video and you can like just you know give them the video feedback back, right? Which is kind of cool, I think. Um, uh, but um, Canvas has problems with like I would love for everyone to be able to see the the videos that everyone else is submitting. But there's no easy way to do that. Basically, right now, they have to double submit it, right? They have to submit it to me to get it graded. And then they have to submit it somewhere else to have other people comment on it, right? Mm -hmm. And what I would love for them to be able to do, and this inevitably leads to like lots of anguish because you know, they submitted it one place and never submitted it for grading, or they didn't submit it for their peer comments. And, mm -hmm. um, uh, but, uh, you know, it, you know, it's some anguish, but you know, we deal. Um, the the other thing I think that is difficult is right now, as I understand it, there's no way to actually um, have peer grader, right? So like, I for thinking about you know how to scale up maybe even larger, um, uh, one option would be if students sort of you know submit videos every week and then you know most of the weeks they're grading each other's videos, right, and leaving each other's comments and, and things like that. Um, but in order to do that, everyone has to sub like everyone has to submit every week, right? And so, right now, in order to make it all work, everyone has a due date every week, even though they aren't uh, on the books, even though they aren't actually needing to turn something in. And so, the idea that like a third of the class is turning something in in any given week is not well integrated into the into the ecosystem. So our f oh sorry, please. <coughs> Let's talk more because that's intriguing. 